Hello everyone, my name is Amit. So today I'm going to talk about how I converted a static website um, into a Go executable using the Go Embed package. Um, so I want to start off with the problem statement. Um, and I also want to start off with that there was no problem to solve. I wanted to host, uh, you know, the wanted is the keyword, to host my new static website in the cloud on a virtual machine. I did not want to do, you know, the usual way that I have been doing, and most of you probably have been doing using, you know, things like GitHub Pages, S3. There are various solutions that we can use, but I wanted it to do it differently, and hence my problem. So I started thinking about the solution. Um, so my initial plan was, okay, I'll, I'll just generate the HTML, the CSS files, I'll copy it to the server, put in probably Nginx, um, and be done. But then I was thinking, okay, um, you know, I have been working on Go recently a lot. Why not uh, I try to write my server in Go and serve the files from the file system? So that was a second thought. And then, you know, the lightning, well, uh, excuse the pun, struck me. Uh, and then I thought of the embed package, uh, which slowly uh, uh, and gradually, uh, when it was introduced in Go 1.16, has probably become one of my uh, favorite standard library packages. And so this was what I thought would be the solution uh, to the problem that I created for myself, essentially. So I'll write up my core um, content in Markdown. I'll use Hugo, um, generate the HTML, CSS, and then I'll write my server you know, with everything embedded and then deploy or copy the binary to the virtual machine in the cloud. So this is this was how my first pass looked like. So I created the new Hugo site. I wrote my content. I uh, generated um, the HTML and, you know, put in a nice theme, got the HTML and the CSS files. And then I went into so hugo by default generates the content into a directory called public so i go into my you know change my directory into public i initialize a go module and then i start coding up my server so this is uh, the first key aspect uh, of of this um, solution is writing the uh, correct go embed directives so here you can see that i have got three uh, lines of go embed directives i wanted it to be this way so that it's just, uh, you know, one line is not uh, like too long. Um, of course, I could have put it in one line. The key is, of course, um, the site data variable, which is of type embed.fs, which is essentially in simple terms, uh, it's uh, creating a file system uh, based on the, the files that you have given it. And the reason for doing it this way is so that uh, we can then essentially create a handler for this file system that we have created using the http.fileserver and http.fs functions from the net http package. And the rest of it is how you should just normally uh, create a http server. We create a new box. Um, we then call the listen and serve function, passing in the box, and that was it. Um, and then I built it. So I built my server using the go build. Now, uh, so, uh, and then I SCP my server, which is the binary um, to my host. One thing that tripped me off the first time I tried it was I just did exactly what I've written here, but then I realized I'm going to deploy this on a Linux system, but hey, we know that Go makes it very easy. So use the Go OS and the Go Arc environment variables. So I was hosting it on uh, Linux on an ARM64 machine. So I just did the Go build and then copied over the binary once more. And I copied it to this uh, location, which is which I'm calling local bin practical go website. Now the naming will become clear in a bit. And so this is a Linux um, uh, Red, Red Hat uh, flavored uh, distribution that I'm running. So I create a systemd file because I want this program to be running in, in the background and it's a long lived process essentially. So this is my systemd file which is uh, init process on Linux systems and init manager, sorry. And I'm running it as a user nobody so that it has the least privileges um, possible. And I'm also setting up the listener address to be 8080. So my, my server is going to be listening on port 8080. Um, I then create a DNS record and pointed it to the public IP address of my virtual machine. So we have the DNS hooked up uh, with the virtual machine. 
Uh, now, by default, the DNS uh, HTTPS, I want HTTPS, so that means I need something to be listening on port 443, as well as we, I need a TLS certificate. Now, remember, my website or my server is listening on 8080. Okay, so what do I do? I bring in Caddy. So I installed Caddy via the repository that the project provided, which meant it was automatically a systemd service. I created this very simple Caddy file, um, the practical gobook.net. So that's the DNS record. And then the key part, which is the reverse proxy. So all I'm telling it to do is any requests coming into this uh, virtual machine or, or to Caddy on practical gobook.net hostname just for, uh, reverse proxy back to localhost 8080, which is where I started my um, Go server with all the embedded um, you know, uh, data in it. And uh, super easy, I started Caddy and uh, the right that the certificate was obtained successfully. Okay, and the result is, and this is the big reveal, I, my new book is well, coming out uh, sometime this month, and that's called Practical Go, and that's the website I created for it. So that is a problem I created for myself. I do encourage you to check it out. Um, I think a lot of you will find this book useful. Uh, now, okay, going back to the topic of this presentation. So, and then when I do a call, I can see that the server is CADI. So it's served by, um, you know, CADI, it's confirmed. It's also HTTP2 and it's HTTPS. So awesome. Now, I wanted to improve things, so I did a second pass, and that was a lightning talk driven development. So I created an automated uh, way to create this initial server.go and go.mod. I put it on, on GitHub. It's the simplest of program you can think of using Go templates. And what I can now do is instead of having to create the go.mod and server.go manually,